In this microsode, I'm going to demonstrate uh, how selection works in Inkscape. So let's get started. Uh, if we create a, uh, you know, use the rectangle tool and create a square here or a rectangle, um, the way we select it is usually um, with the selection tool. You can hit F1 um, to get to that tool. So if you're working in some other uh, tool, you can always hit the F1 key and be back selecting objects. Okay, so let's do, um, uh, let's create a, a couple other extra objects, uh, just for the fun of it, uh, to show you how multiple selection works. So we'll make these uh, different colors. There we go. So by left clicking, we can, just left clicking once, we can select each object. Just click on the one that you want. If we wanted to select more than one object, there's a couple different ways of doing it. So we can select the first object, hold the shift key, select the second object. And if you keep the shift key down, you can select the third object. Okay, as many as you want. All right. You can also use uh, windowing to select multiple objects. So if we wanted to select all three, we could draw a window around them with the selection tool. Uh, we could either draw it that, you know, bottom left to you know, bottom to top or top to bottom. Any of these methods work as long as you surround the complete object. Okay, and if we wanted to just grab, say, the star in the circle, we could just window those two. Okay, so the object that has to be completely within that uh, that window to be selected. Okay, if we wanted to select these two, we'd get them that way. All right. Now, uh, in Inkscape, there's a concept of Z order or Z order. Um, and what that does is, when you create multiple objects, each time you create an object, it, it gets a certain level. All right. The way, easiest way to understand it is uh, looking at the objects we just created. First, we created the square, uh, and I think, uh, yeah, then we created the star, so that was on top of the square, and then we created the circle, and that was created on top of the star. Okay. So everything's kind of layered. Uh, like a pancake or a stack of pancakes on top of one another. All right. Now, if we wanted to change the order of these, the Z order, then uh, we could select the one we want, say the one at the back, and we use these four buttons here. Okay. So we can uh, raise it one step or raise it to the top. Uh, you might want to lower your selection to the bottom or lower it one step. In this case, if we wanted to bring the rectangle right up to the top, we would hit this button here and all of a sudden now it's on top. Okay. Now you might say, well, how do we select what's below here? Do we have to move things out of the way just to get to the star? Right? Um, actually, there's a, a few different ways. Uh, one way to do it is you can hit the tab key to cycle through selections. So if you uh, have something selected, you can hit the tab key and it will cycle through things that are selected. All right? Which seems very simple, but when you have multiple objects all over the place, it becomes pretty unwieldy. Uh, a better way, probably, to select objects um, is, you know, by selecting the first object and then holding the Alt key and clicking again, you'll get whatever's under your mouse cursor. Okay, and you can see it's going through, cycling through the objects. Okay, so if we and you know, by looking down at the status bar, we can see what is being selected. So if, right now it's rectangle. I'll hit the Alt key and click again. I can see the ellipse is selected. Click again, the star is selected. Now what do I do? If I just let go of the Alt key and try to grab this thing, left click and drag, it's going to grab the top object. That's not what I want. Okay. So what I want to do is hold Alt, click through to get the object I want. It's the star. Now I'll keep the Alt key down and I'll drag. Okay. And it'll pull the star right out from there. Okay, and that's a handy little tip. If you wanted to grab the ellipse and pull that out, you can as well. Okay, uh, sometimes you might find it easier just to select the object you want, bring it to the top, and then just move it normally without using the Alt key. But there's a you know a few different ways of doing things. Okay, um, now uh, another quick tip uh, for using uh, manipulating objects. What you have to worry about in Inkscape is that there's a single click, and then there's, um, you know, once you've 
we've done a single click, you can actually single click again it, and you'll see a change in the handles around this object. Okay, that's how we rotate and skew objects. So uh, we can just select once and we can click and drag to move it around. If we single click again, uh, well actually, when you have it single clicked, you see all these handles around. What this does is let you scale the object in each of the directions, just like you would think. Okay, and you have to experiment with this. Um, you can hold, while you're doing one of these scales, you can hold the control key and it will do uh, predefined ratios and, and geometry and stuff like that, okay? So uh, it, it behaves a little bit differently when you're holding, right now I'm holding the control key. If I let the control key go, you can see what that handle does, okay? So you play around with those a little bit, but the tricky part is that once you have an object selected, you single click again and you get different handles. These are for rotation, okay? and also for skew. Right? And again, if you hold the control key, what it does is it constrains it to certain increments. And same with rotation. If you hold the control key, it goes in, I think, by default 15 degree increments. You can always change that in the, uh, in the preferences. Okay? If you don't hold the control key, you can just rotate this smoothly. Okay? Uh, circles work more, pretty much the same. Uh, you can stretch them you can uh, do this with them, you know, scale them. But again, if you single click and then single click again, you get the rotation handles, which don't make much sense for a circle, obviously. If we made it an ellipse, single click again, we can rotate that ellipse. We can skew it, okay? And the same with the star object. It's much the same. You can scale it. You can stretch it. If you single click again, you can rotate it or skew it. Right. This little cross in the center, what that is is the rotation center. So if you wanted to rotate around the center, that's great. But say you wanted to rotate around one little point. Okay. What you would do is bring the star down here, and now when you rotate, it rotates around that point. Okay. So that's the pivot point of the object. That can be very, very useful when you're drawing. And that's it. Uh, just basic selection and object uh, manipulation. Thanks for watching.